Well, I got about two windrows left and I ran out of baling wire. So let me clear all these bales. They're actually tied on one side and not the other right now, but the other, the other side's gonna run out any minute. All right. So I have never done this before. So we're gonna learn together. So this is the one that's empty. Had cardboard originally wrapped around it. And this is the, oops. This is the end of the other one. It's got a little bit left in it, but uh, we're just gonna have to cut it loose and take it out. <clears throat> Change both of these out. See, not much, not much wire left in that one. These rolls are a hundred pounds each. So hopefully that wire lasts me a long time. So this side says, it says start other side. So I take it this goes to the back. Now this box, it doesn't appear that this box will fit in here because this is kind of a round chamber. So let's see what the roll looks like. Yep. I'm gonna have to take it out of the box anyway. There we go. 100 pounds of baling wire. Remember, this is the back side. Whoa! There's a trick. Don't let that happen. <laughs> ah. Now I'll see if I can get this in here. Oh, I may, have, I may have just hosed myself right there. Holy cow. Well, if you wanna see somebody screw up some bailing wire, I think you just seen it happen. Those other pieces of tape weren't holding anything. Oh my. I don't know how I'm gonna get that to go work back in there now. It has it considerably gotten wider than it was. I am in trouble. I'm close. I'm close to getting it in there. In my own mind. Well, I, I royally screwed this up. Well, if I've taught anybody anything is don't do what I just did. <sighs> oh, it doesn't help that this weighs a hundred pounds. <sighs> okay. So I got a piece of rebar here. I'm just gonna slowly push down on some of this wire. I may have trouble with this baler for <laughs> the next thousand bales. Oh man. I uh let's hope that I don't do this to the next one. Well, if there's one thing this channel is all about, it's about learning from your mistakes. We're making them. I don't remember. Where's the one? I sure make them. All right, so we're going to do this one a little differently. Not sure how, but we're going to try to do this a little differently. I'm going to see if I can get it to fall straight in there. Hopefully, the tape stays on. See what happens. See if it'll even fit. Heck, I might find out it wasn't it doesn't fit. Oh. 
Oh, it doesn't hardly want to fit straight out of the box. Ow. Yes! <laughs> I got that one in there. Well, that didn't hardly want to go straight out of the box. Well, I don't know what I should do with this one. I really don't. I don't think there's any way I'm going to get it back out now. I've, I've kind of pushed it down in there too hard. So anyway, this red one with the red tag on it. It's going to get tied off as the end. And then there's one with a green tag. And that's going to be the one we're going to feed through the machine. Well, I think that's about the best I'm going to be able to do. I pretty much mangled this first roll of wire. And um, I guess if it starts giving me fits, I'll just have to buy a new roll and swap it out. Because there's no way... I can pretty much fix this at this point in time. But lesson learned is uh, it's very tricky to get these in. Even this one, knowing how it went in, it just barely fit. So, all right, let's get to, let's get to uh, feeding our wire through. So we're gonna take our wire, we're gonna feed it through this ceramic guide and then goes through a hole here in the baler. Feed it into there. And then we'll take the other one and we'll feed it through the other guide. And then it goes through the same hole on the side of the baler. So when the wire comes through, it comes across and goes through this pulley. There's another pulley on the other side for the other wire. And then there's a little slot that it feeds through over here and it comes out right in front of the needle. So once the wire comes out through there, it goes across and then it just ties off over here. And that makes it so this wire is hanging right in front of the needle. It'll feed it right through the next pass and send it up to the knotters. So I got the baling wire fed back through the machine and I'm ready to try it out. So that was, uh, that was definitely a rookie mistake on my part, trying to get that wire in, in there. I should have not undone any of the tape and uh, just tried to slide it right in there. So. Um, I will never do that again. So now it's in there, it's all mangled up, it's in there really tight, and uh, it'll probably have problems feeding the wire. Um, so I've only got two windrows left, so hopefully I can make it through those two windrows without having to jack with this too much. Um, if this ends up being a problem, I'll probably just pull the whole thing out and just replace it with a whole new spool. Um, that's an $80 spool. Each one of those spools is $80, so that may be an $80 mistake. But uh, trying to refeed that wire through is not an easy thing to do. And if you have to do that every three or four bales, yeah, you're, you're going to $80, you'd be happy to pay, that's for sure. So anyway, let's go ahead and fire everything back up and see if it runs. So I am expecting there to be at least two bales in the machine that aren't tied. So once we get past those two bales, uh, we'll be able to start telling whether the wire is going to actually work or not. Well, I successfully made a couple bales and then now it's all tied up. I don't know if you guys can see that, but man, it is all knotted up in there. And it's pulling out like five wires that are all going back trying to uh, go through the ceramic. Oh man, I may not make it through this. I'm going to start getting my pliers out see if I can start cutting this away and finding the right wire here. Well, at least I got 62 bales on the trailer tonight. Probably have to get up early in the morning and go get another spool of wire, and we'll give it another shot. 
So this morning I got up and uh, I ended up calling the New Holland dealership. I wasn't for sure if there was maybe some New Holland brand uh, bailing wire or something that would fit in here better. And I called them and they didn't have any bailing wire. So I'm not for sure if New Holland actually makes any wire for this or not. So the only brand I can find is the red brand bailing wire. That's what everybody seems to carry locally. Girl King, Tractor Supply, everybody carries that brand. So I ended up uh, going on a journey this morning trying to find some. And it took me three towns, three different stores before I found bailing wire. So I got a box here, same stuff I had yesterday. Hopefully we can get this put in here today. I won't mess it up and uh, we can get this run back in the machine and finish bailing the field. So let's go ahead and try to get this next uh, box of bailing wire in here. Like I said, these boxes are 100 pounds of bailing wire. So they're a little awkward to try to maneuver. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut the side off of this. Be a little different than yesterday maybe. hoping to get the box right up against the machine to drop this in there. So this box is labeled, you know, the starting end and the finish end. So it at least helps you know which way you want to put it in here. So what I'm gonna do, aha, let's get it on the side right there. Maybe I can kind of work the box in just slightly, I'm hoping to get the box slightly inside of there. Yeah, that doesn't really seem to be working either. The wire is wanting to mangle. But it fell in, good deal. There's a, there's a hole that the wire is supposed to go through in this feeder here, so you gotta feed it through that hole. And then now, hopefully I get it fed through the rest of the machine and, and this will actually start bailing some bales. Well, at least I got a few tools in my truck. I always think I need to, to do something different and have a lot more tools in there. I'm gonna go ahead and take the chute off. We're just gonna be dropping these on the ground for the rest of the time. Well, I didn't get the wire quite in there right. It only tied it on one side. And uh, as I looked it over, it was still under there tied, but it was off to the side where the needle couldn't feed it through. So I had to reposition the wire underneath so it could grab with the needle. I finally just got my first uh, bale of hay that's both sides are tied. So I've got a total, I think, of nine bales out here that only have one side tied. I'm gonna go take the wires out of them and go spread those out so I can go back over them with the baler. So it looks like the hay baler is working good now. So I think I've just tied six bales in a row, no problems. And uh, the problem I am having is this shady area over here. I was worried about that when we first started baling hay. And it's been a lot cooler lately and it was really cool last night. It was 38 degrees when I got up this morning. So this, this area back here is just not drying. It's still a little bit, well, I, cause I had to go break those bales up because they didn't tie good, right? Spread them back out. And when I did, I could tell they're not as dry as I want them to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the rake real quick and I'm gonna rake this back and forth and bring it over into the sun and then I may just run the tether over it, spread it back out a little bit, let it dry for a few hours in the sun today, and then come back this evening and uh, finish that all up. So that's what I'm gonna go do now.
since this is the last cut of hay for the season, all this equipment's gonna get put away. So I forced it to tie that last little part of the bale. I'm gonna see if I can clean this out. Don't want any hay in here in the winter time. Plus I got work I'm gonna do on this anyway. It's gonna be the smallest bale you ever seen. There you go, all tied and everything. It's about a <laughs> 16 inch bale. I can just feed that to the animals now. So I know a lot of people will store one bale of hay inside the chamber in here and it'll make it easier when you start your next bale of hay. It has something for it to push against. But I've pulled all this out. Um, I think it'll store better without the grass in there, but I really pulled all this out so I can do some work to it this winter time. I'm planning on getting in there and trying to sharp, sharpen the blades that are in there and go through the machine just a little bit more. But uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'll just take it back to the garage. I'm gonna try to blow everything out of here and get it as clean as possible before I store it away. So the only thing I got left now is to pick up the rest of these bales and go stack them up in the barn. So uh, that's pretty much the end of hay season this year. Um, this third cut has been a totally uh, different experience for me than the last two. Um, the weather's been a lot cooler. So it's been 20 degrees cooler. It hasn't been quite as sunny. It has been completely dry though. In fact, we've had a lot of, a couple of the mornings here, we haven't even really had any dew on the ground. So it's just seemed a lot uh, less humidity, a lot, lot drier, but the hay didn't dry as quick. So I, I gave it an extra day to dry. And then I ended up running into that whole, whole baling wire fiasco. I mean, I really screwed up that first uh, roll of wire. I don't, I don't know what I was thinking, to be honest with you. Um, there's probably some of you who were watching that could have seen that coming. But, uh, so that pretty much delayed me a whole day to go, you know, or at least a half a day to go find another roll of baling wire. But, uh, you know, after that, I tried to bale this and it was still wet anyway. So um, maybe it was good to have a little bit of a delay um, cause I may have had a bunch of wet bales. So yeah. And then I had to, you know, do everything to get that to dry back out so I could bale it today. But in the end, I think I've got a good quality product here. Um, the highest moisture in these bales here were, uh, 17 point some percent. Yesterday it was running about 14 and a half percent. So, um, I will say this is the best looking hay I've ever made. Um, it's got a lot of color in it. The alfalfa looks good. Um, it just wasn't sun bleached and everything as much as the previous season since it's been partly cloudy and everything. So, you know, definitely a whole different experience, but I think in the end it's some really good looking hay. So um, I'm kind of glad that uh, the hay season's over, to be honest with you. I've already called the guy. Um, I'm going to sell 50 bales from yesterday's cut um, to him. And then everything that's left over, I'm going to keep myself because we're going to try to keep extra hay because in case we want to get maybe a couple new animals this late this fall or winter. But um, yeah, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of glad it's over. It'd be nice to do something different because during hay season you definitely have that kind of always looming over your head. You always know in like another four weeks you're gonna have to go do this all over again, another four or five weeks. And uh, so it's always it's always looming, right? So now I know I'm completely done till probably, you know. May or June or so of next year. So it'll be nice to get out here, get cutting some firewood again. We've got some fencing we we're gonna try to put up and uh, we maybe get back working on the barn and doing some other things like that. So it'll be nice uh, to finally get on some other projects. It seems like this hay is really taking up a lot of my time, that's for sure. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, continue to follow along as we keep improving our property up and uh, just overall uh, enjoy living the country life trying to be more self-sufficient. So thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one.